Papa John's pizza? Rachel scoffs at me. I ignore her and roll my eyes. Max saunters towards us with a pack of Cheetos while I arrange the mattresses for the sleepover. It's been a while since the three of us gathered for our girls' night in. Oh, come on, it'll be fun, Max chimes, agreeing with me that the prank would be sublime. But I know Rachel doesn't like prank calls. She's too chicken to take risks. She gives us a look, pouting her lips in annoyance. Oh, come on, it's just a silly game. And they can't even see you, it's over the phone. Relax, I say with a smile, but she still has that troubled look on her face. She eventually caves in with a shrug. I sigh, feeling content as I look at my two best friends. The last time we had done this was six months ago in junior high. Going to three different high schools within the state had put a strain on our friendship. But I was glad we finally linked up this fall break. I glanced at the time, remembering the dinner party my parents had gone to. They would be back late in the night and I wanted us to be through with the games before then. Part of tonight's game was prank calling, a favorite of Max's and I. Rachel was more of a sucker for charades and group games. Okay, I'm going first, Max says, smiling mischievously. She makes the call first, and after the person on the other end picks up, we can tell it's a guy on tonight's shift. Hello, my name's Carl, and this is Papa John's Pizza. How may I take your order? Hi, can I get a mozzarella veggie prime super? She says, forcing herself not to snicker. I'm sorry, a what now? The poor guy asks, and Max repeats herself with a different order that obviously doesn't exist. It goes on for a while before she cuts the call and we <laughs> laugh our asses off. Okay, I think I want to go next, Rachel says, finally loosening up. She waits at least 15 minutes before calling. It's the same bored voice of the guy earlier. She also calls the name of the wildest thing she can conjure, and the pizza guy is playing along at first, but starts sounding a bit off towards the end of the call. At this point, we're almost sure he can tell it's a prank. Rachel ends the call before he can say more, and we all continue laughing. It's my turn. And Rachel suggests we try a different pizza place, but I still want to mess with the same dude. For real though, I think you should try a different place, Caitlin. Max sides with Rachel this time, but I ignore the duo, already dialing the number. Hello? I speak, waiting for the usual catchphrase. But the only thing I hear is the gentle sound of someone breathing. Rachel and Max can hear this too since the phone is on speaker. They signal for me to cut the call, but I still ignore their warnings. H hello Is anyone there? You girls think this is funny, yeah? The guy suddenly speaks, his voice deadly low. I panic and cut the call. My heart skips a beat and I can feel my hands shaking. Rachel and Max share the same horrified look that must be on my face. That went south real fa- Max comments, but is interrupted when my phone vibrates loudly in my hands. It's a call from an unknown number. Yet, I do not answer the call. I panic again and cut the call, throwing the phone across my bedroom. Rachel's phone rings a few seconds later. And it's also from an unknown caller. The three of us exchange looks. The panic has enveloped everyone now. Do you think it's the same guy? Max asks. I, I don't know. Just don't answer it, I say. But Rachel has already clicked on the green button. She doesn't say anything. And we hear the same gentle breathing again. At this point, it's safe to say that we are freaked out and want to end the game. But we all freeze when the person suddenly speaks. One, two, seven, Avery Street, the person says, calmly and in a low tone. My heart stops and restarts for a moment as I realize that they just called out my house address. 
I rush to the window and peep from the side, not wanting to pull the curtains out of the way. Thinking I will see whoever it is, I'm still confused and scared to my bones as I peek through the window. But I don't see any suspicious looking cars or people on the street. The way my house is situated, it stands isolated at the end of the street, with a significant distance between itself and any other houses. So if anyone were hiding out there, it would be hard to remain inconspicuous. But then, at almost the exact moment that the unknown caller begins to speak again, I notice for the first time the pizza van parked at the entrance to my street. My eyes must have glossed over it the first time because it was so obvious you couldn't miss it. Since you girls like playing pranks, the voice at the end of the call says, and we all take an intelligent guess at who it is now, then you might enjoy what I have in store for you. Dude, Max speaks up. It was only a silly joke. We're just dumb teenagers, okay? It was just a joke. I know, the man, or rather, Carl, says before he laughs a crooked laugh. <laughs> I just want to join in the game, that's all. And before we can process what he had said, the lights in the house go out. Rachel and Max instantly switch on their flashlights on their phones. I scramble across the room to where I'd thrown mine and turned it on as well. Rachel has long cut the call, and I look to find Max already on a 911 call. I dial my father's number, and I'm about to hit send when I notice that my phone has no signal. There's suddenly no service! Max screams, and Rachel looks at us, showing us her screen. She has no bars on her phone as well. What the hell is going on? I scream now, pulling at my hair before rushing back to the window. I check to see if the weird pizza van is still there. And well enough, it's parked right in the corner. I told you not to make any prank calls, Caitlin. I told you. Rachel is quick to throw the blame at me, and I stare at her in disbelief. H how can we be sure it's the pizza guy? We can't tell. Max comes to my defense. Look, let's just lock all the doors and windows for now. At least till Kat's parents get back. Rachel and I nodded as we both almost flew down the stairs in a hurry. I dashed to the front door and bolted the locks, looking from side to side to see if there was anyone suspicious out there. Once I was sure the coast was clear, I ran to the kitchen to check if Rachel needed my help with locking up. On my arrival, I could see Rachel fixed to the spot, as her eyes, now wide with horror, were glued to the kitchen window. I followed her gaze and held my hands over my mouth to prevent the scream that threatened to rip through my throat. <gasps> Standing outside the window was the figure of a man, huge and tall as he towered over the window frame. The curtains were still drawn and prevented us from seeing exactly who it was, but we could tell from the silhouette shape that the man wore a jacket and a cap. I could almost hear my teeth chatter and slowly, I crept up behind her and put my hand over her mouth. She jumped out of fright, but I assured her it was only me. <gasps> After inquiring if she'd locked the door already, she shook her head and told me the man had gotten there before she arrived. Bracing whatever ounce of courage I had left in me, I snuck up to the door and immediately bolted the locks. From the sound it made, the man's head tilted toward the direction of the door and aggressively began to nudge it in an attempt to open it. Rachel pulled me back as we watched in horror. Max had joined us now, and she immediately grabbed a nearby kitchen knife, and we followed suit, preparing to defend ourselves if need be. We didn't know how possible it was for a couple of 14-year-old girls to stand up to a full-grown adult male but we only had to stall till we could somehow find help. But the man suddenly stopped fiddling with the door. He turned his head to a direction and dashed away from the kitchen. We looked at each other in confusion, wondering where he was headed to. And like clockwork, 
My mind went to the garage. The garage door! I exclaimed before running towards the direction of the garage. But I guess, <gasps> when on my arrival, I looked down to see the sandy footprint of a boot on the marbled floor. At that moment, I realized that he was in the house. I could hear Rachel and Max running behind me, but I didn't have enough time to tell them what had happened. So I ran back towards them, grabbed their hands, and rushed up the stairs. They followed me without questioning, and we stormed into my room. After locking my room door, they followed me into the closet. We sat there, staying as quiet as was humanly possible as we tried to control the sound of our breathing. He's in the house. He's in the house. I whispered holding the handle of the closet door to prevent it from prying open. Before the girls could react, we'd started hearing a thumping sound from downstairs. Max and Rachel froze, with Rachel slapping her arm over her mouth and Max shutting her eyes tightly closed. I mentally cursed, remembering how I dropped the knife back when I went to check the garage, and I couldn't see either of the girls with their kitchen utensils either. With every second, the thumping sound increased, and we eventually realized that the strange sound was actually footsteps. I thanked my stars that I locked the door, peeping through the little slots of the closet door as the unwelcome stranger fiddled with the door handle. But as I watched in horror, when that didn't last long, Within minutes, he was able to pry open my room door, and the first thing I saw were big, black boots stepping into my room. I scrambled backwards into the girls and held my mouth to stop myself from making a sound. It felt like my ears were ringing as I watched the man approach us. His boots left sandy prints with each step before he finally stopped right in front of the closet. All we could hear were the sounds of deep, heaving breaths and the sick, cackling sound of his laughter. He crouched, leaning closer to the closet, and I swear I could almost feel my soul leave my body. You see, girls, he began his voice sounding like something that had scraped the pavement. It was so raspy that my ears tingled with irritation. It's not good to prank call people these days. You never know who is listening. And I could see him grin through the crevice of the closet door. I shut my eyes as tight as I could while the three of us held onto each other in fear. Then, we heard the same thumping sound as the man slowly walked out of my room. Yet none of us had the strength to leave that closet. We were beyond terrified, shaking and chattering our teeth like someone had left us out on a December's night. A few minutes had passed before the light bulb in my room flickered back on. We could hear the notification sounds buzz on our phones across the room. But we stayed put in the closet, terrified beyond measure of stepping out of the enclosed space. We didn't know how many minutes had passed or how long we had remained in the tiny closet. Then we heard sounds coming from downstairs, which made us jump before hearing a familiar voice that sounded a lot like my mother's. Caitlin, honey, did you girls order pizza? There's a delivery man at the door. Subscribe today or beware.